Yo, welcome back to Infant Investors, the home for all new and non-investors. I'm Curtis, and today, I know I've been late on this. I've been very, very, very late on this. This is the free trades, new 25 stock review, but I'm actually doing not only last week's, but also the weeks before. I was actually gonna try and include today's, but they haven't done it yet, and I've got things to do. So I'm just gonna do the last two weeks, and then in the next couple of days, I'll do the video for today. So if you wanna know my thoughts on the last couple of weeks, new stocks, please like, please comment, please subscribe. I'm on a mission to get to two and a half thousand subscribers and get the world of investing out to more people in a clear, simple, and transparent manner. But first, as you guys know on the spreadsheet that I will leave the link in the description, I have added the new stocks. New five, I'll actually update that to new week five. Uh, these stocks here and then new six will be the stocks from last week and then obviously this week's stocks when they finally are released will be new seven and I will definitely add those in there. So the stocks in question are Accenture, Synthoma, Aberfith Small Co, Intergriffin Holding, Personal Assets, Fisher Iron Sons, Telecom Plus, TI Fluid, St. Modwin Prop, Bruin Dolphin, Jupiter Euro, Crest Nicholson, Go Ahead Group, Cairn Energy, PZ Cousins, CLS Holdings, Hunting, Herald Investments, Hill & Smith, Future, Dejan Holdings, Premier Oil, Senior, Temple Bar, Polypipe Group, Clarkson, Elementis. So I'm just going to start with the week before last first. And in this week, I'm going to get straight into it. There was quite a few that seemed very, very undervalued, but you have to take the undervalued status with a pinch of salt. And um, I was having a conversation with a guy in the community who asked me about how seriously I take the undervalued metric within simply Wall Street. And, <coughs> excuse me, I would say that um, historically I used to take it quite fairly fairly seriously. I would say now the I take it seriously still. However, I do make sure that it is... It is valued against these four other metrics being the PEG ratio, the future growth, and obviously the dividends. Those are my four metrics. I'm even starting to look at past performance now. It's not going to be one of my key indicators, but it definitely is a secondary factor along with debt is that I look at in terms of companies as well. But the reason why you have to be careful with undervalued status is when you see companies like this with a high that undervalued status, um, there could be some red flags within that, in that. There could be some negative reasons as to why it's so undervalued, probably because the share price might have tanked or has been continuously trending down for the last year. So I will say, if you guys are using Simply Wall Street, definitely be mindful. I don't mind companies that have a high undervalued status. In fact, I actually look out for them. But what I'm saying is that I look out for them and for them to have the other metrics as well. Um, I don't look at that solely. Um, if you look at that solely, you might be getting one side of the picture. So that's just a definite caution for you. And shout out to the person that, you know, I had the conversation with on the community. But in today's world, in terms of the first week or the week before last, the one that actually caught my eye in New 5 was Bruin Dolphin, which is financial services. Don't even watch my spelling right now. I'm just... Uh, yeah, that's better. Financial services. This is the one I put into appendix status. You'll find that the undervalued status isn't actually that high. The PE ratio is PEG ratio is 1.1, 15.3 in terms of earnings and 5.19 in terms of dividends. So if we want to go and check out Bruin Dolphin, which we can do now, um, I'll tell you why I put it in to a pending status, my friends. Now, um, Bruin Dolphin Holdings, Bruin Dolphin Holdings together with the subsidiaries provides wealth management service in the United Kingdom, Channel Islands and the Republic of Ireland. Now, obviously you can see that the graph is trending down, but there is obviously peaks um, and troughs that's happening there. Um, you'll find it's not that undervalued, it's, it's sort of moderately undervalued, so it's at a 9% discount. It's at an okay PEG ratio. The future performance for me um, was decent in terms of, you know, 15.3. I would sometimes I like to see a bit higher, 
but actually it's a it's pretty good to have a 15.3 future performance um it's very healthy obviously having no debt which i think is 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 quite important in this sort of recession climate that we potentially are embarking towards um and obviously it's 5.19 on a dividend um been paying for the last 10 years been stable for the last 10 years the only issue is that it's not fully covered by earnings but they are expected um, to be covered by earnings as well. So that's one thing. But it's not something I'm going to run to add to my portfolio. It's something I will potentially look at and investigate a little bit more. I'm not too sure about adding a financial services company to uh, my portfolio at this current stage. But I did obviously want to be transparent about something that potentially did catch my eye. Um, it looks healthy. The Snowflake description says full loss balance sheet with reasonable growth potential and pays a dividend. So it looks healthy. It looks pretty safe. It's not going to be, you know, your highest growth stock investment, but it potentially is going to be one that, you know, might make you a little bit of change. So that's one that I was potentially looking into. So I put that into pending. Um, what else actually tickled my fancy? There was another one here. Yes. This one is Crest Nicholson as well. Now, the only issue is that a lot of these are the same industries that I really, really want to avoid. And I think, you know what, my criteria is lending itself to banking, to house building, et cetera, et cetera. And in fact, I might have to start looking at a different criteria if I want to start attracting different types of stocks because it seems to be the same ones always cropping up or the same type of ones insurance banking house building um, and those are three things that I really have no appetite getting into just because I hold so many of those stocks but as you can see the graph has been quite volatile but it's kind of been trending upwards um, over the past year you can see that it's pretty undervalued um, by 37% the PEG ratio is astronomical, so it's not good. That's not a good thing. And obviously, the future performance is is not a good thing as well. Um, obviously, the debt is pretty low, and they've got a high level of inventory being a house builder, um, and it pays a pretty high dividend as well. Um, I didn't put this into a pending status. It wasn't something that I felt you know fully fit my criteria, but again, it was just something that was that was interesting to call out if it's something that you guys might also um, be interested in. Another one that I wanted to also call out is doo -doo 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 -doo, in U5. I am looking for doo -doo -doo. where are you? Where are you? Where are you? I am looking for there we go. Senior. So let's find senior. Senior was interesting to me, and I will tell you uh, why. So, Senior's Capital Goods, Senior PLC designs, manufactures, and markets high technology components and systems for the principal original equipment producers in the aerospace, defense, land, vehicle, and power and energy markets worldwide. The last earning updates. So, I wanted to call this out because if you just look at the graph, obviously it's just been continuously, continuously tailing off um, and bottoming out. So obviously that is something to be wary of and that's probably the reason why it seems so um, undervalued. It's got a decent, it's decent in terms of PEG ratio. However, the difference between this and uh, sort of some of the previous stocks is that the, f the, the, the performance, sorry, in the next one to three years based on nine analysts is looking a little bit higher, 20% growth performance. So, you know, think about potentially a 20% performance on 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 this sort of share price as well um also the debt isn't that high to be honest it's actually covered um and you can obviously see there's all those green ticks in terms of debt so there is debt within the organization but it seems to be covered um and it pays quite a modest dividend as well so i wanted to call it out and also sorry another thing about the dividends they've been stable for the past 10 years they've increased for the past 10 years they're covered by earnings 1.5 times and they're expected, dividends after threes are expected to be well covered by earnings 2.3 times. So in terms
terms of the dividend metrics for you dividend investors, it's ticking all of those dividend boxes. It's not too high a dividend that you see a cause for concern. The health of the company looks pretty decent. Uh, obviously, I would need to do a little bit more look looking into the company. The future performance based of nine analysts looks okay as well. The PEG ratio suggests that it's a good buy at the moment and it's a good growth um, expectation and it's a little bit undervalued as well so this is the reason why I wanted to call it out obviously the graph is tailed off it can be a cause for concern but also there could be a potential opportunity in there so yeah those are the ones I wanted to call out and see you know if you guys are interested then you know they might be worth looking into but you know all of the information is in the sheets and now you can at a glance see um, all of the stocks that I've basically added for you know not last week the week before and you know potentially decide which ones you might want to look into further for those of you that are new let me just be crystal clear I don't do this to advise you what stocks to buy I'm only doing this as this is my high level criteria and I use this as a way to filter stocks that may be potentially interesting versus ones that I would have absolutely no interest in and the ones that I may be interested in I will then do a lot more research into those companies so this is just the sort of first filter the first gate that it goes through and quite often more often than not even ones I put into a pending status I don't actually invest in anyway because I might have found something out or discovered something later down the line or I've realized actually it just doesn't fit with my strategy um, overall so this is just the first gate now in new six from we've got equinity PPHE Hotel, Schroeder Asia, Hilton Food, SIG, Oxford Instrument, Apex Global, Pure Tech, McCarthy, Amigo, Morgan Advance, Charter Court, Bank of Georgia, IP Group, Fort Imprint Group, Back of War, Sabre Insurance, Schroeder Oriental, Law, Deb Corp, Next Energy, Kynos, Sirius, Riverstone, TBC, and GCP Student Living, which is a re. <laughs> There was nothing in here that excited me off last week's batch. I'm not going to lie. I was pretty disappointed. There was nothing in there that actually caught my eye. There was nothing in there that I actually felt, you know what, that is an investable opportunity for me. Now, as you can see, this is the type of thing. There are loads that are suggesting they are extremely undervalued, but you have to take it with a pinch of salt. When I looked at some of the other metrics um, and lined with them, it, it just doesn't feel that worthwhile investments but obviously i i absolutely could be wrong and i'm willing to definitely recognize that i could be wrong but they weren't they weren't that applicable one thing i did want to call out to you just to show you an example is amigo which is a final financial services company so if we go over to amigo 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 holdings Amigo Holdings PLC through its subsidiaries provides guarantor loans to individuals in the United Kingdom. The last earnings update was 21 days ago. We can see the graph has been tailing off and then you can see that it's tanked here. When we click on the event to try and find out why it's tanked, it's not giving me the information, but usually typically I would get a little bit of a, a get, I'd get a bit of an answer as to why. For some reason, maybe this is because I'm using an old Simply Wall Street, maybe. Um, it's not giving me the reason why it is absolutely tanked um, from their earnings update. Probably because of poor earnings, which might suggest an opportunity. However, if you look at the last year returns, it's minus 69.3. So this is what I wanted to show you. When you see something that's this level of undervalued, it doesn't actually, although it's got ticks, and it's got ticks here, doesn't necessarily mean it's a good thing. It just means they predicted it to be undervalued at the moment. Uh, and I don't think it's taken into consideration some of the factors like their earnings, etc. Um, so it's something to definitely be mindful of. It looks like a good thing, but it can also be a negative thing. Again, the PEG ratio is phenomenal. The lower the number, the better. So it looks like a phenomenal buy. 9% performance, modest, um, in terms of the next one to three years as well. Um, obviously a huge huge amount of debt on the balance sheet and the debt just seems to be increasing there was a little dip before the beginning of 2019 but it looks like it's potentially on the rise again um and then you see things like this their dividend excuse me i just had a snickers ice cream and why well, it's not agreeing with me um 
their their dividends is 12.68 percent expected to be 16.41 percent next year as you know the dividend yield is always in relation to the share price right so if their dividend per share is not increasing and their dividend yield is increasing it's primarily because their share price is decreasing and if they expect to go to 16.41 percent it's probably because they expect actually the dividends to drop um sorry the share price to drop as well so um, although 12.68% looks very, very, very attractive, um, it's definitely something to be careful of. And in terms of the other dividend metrics, it's too early to tell whether they have stable dividends. They've only just started paying out a dividend. Apparently, it's well covered by earnings and expected to grow by earnings. So who knows? But I would say that this is what I would classify a risky investment. If you've got some money and you want to just put it in there and see... You know, if you can earn a nice little 12% on your money and maybe actually the stock won't even drop more than 12%. So in fact, you will potentially profit just purely on a dividend basis, then this could be something to look into. Me personally, I would need to do a lot of research into the company. I would need to see their future plans. I would actually fully need to be bought into their vision and what they're trying to achieve before I would make an investment into um, this organization. But it's something I just wanted to call out that, yeah, you might see this level of undervalue, but it doesn't necessarily mean it's the, the, the safest or the best um, type of investment. You have to weigh it up against the other metrics and you have to do some primary empirical research directly into the company as well in order for that to um, make more sense. Apart from that, there was nothing else that really tickled my fancy, if I'm brutally honest. But maybe there's something that tickles your fancy. So go and check out the link in the description. Go and check out some of these stocks. If you want my opinion on any one of these stocks that I haven't actually called out, then absolutely just leave it in the comments and I will give you my personal opinion on some of these stocks, why I didn't put it into a pending status, what I like or what I dislike about those stocks. So definitely leave that in the comments and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Other than that, hope you found this video useful. Please like, please comment, please subscribe and I will catch you next time. I'll catch you tomorrow with a portfolio update actually. Um, and it's gonna be interesting. I have sold a stock. So, you know, if those of you that wanna know what stock I've sold, um, and my reasons for it, then obviously tune into tomorrow's portfolio update. Other than that, have a good evening, and I'll speak to you soon. Take care. Peace.